Hello, everyone, and welcome to our official Gen Con panel for Renegade Games and Vampire the Masquerade Rivals expandable card game. Uh, I am your humble servant and friend of all mankind, especially the ones that I get to actively feed upon, B. Dave Walters. Uh, and I am joined with these astonishing human beings that help bring this game and many other beloved games to light. And I'm hearing our music playing again. I don't know what's happening. Am I? Do I have a... <laughs> A background score? <laughs> Even I don't know. You're finding out when I do internet. Like, we're doing this real time, baby. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, I'm going to allow you all to introduce yourselves uh, first here. We have uh, Scott. Hello. I'm Scott Gaeta, president and publisher at Renegade Game Studios. Matt. Yep. I'm Matt Hyra. I'm senior game designer at Renegade Game Studios. And lead designer and, of Vampire Rivals. There you go. And you, who are both infinite and eternal, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Sarah Erickson. I am the director of sales and marketing here at Renegade Game Studios. A uh, couple of things going into this. Uh, the Kickstarter is going to be live for this game on August 4th. We're going to be talking about that more here over the next hour, but want to make sure we say that out loud. So get your copy early. I had the advantage to get to play it recently, and the game is incredible. Uh, so make sure you sign up now. Visit It Is Vampire Rivals, or Vampire Rivals Card Game is the URL. VampireRivals.com. Super simple. You can sign up now for the newsletter and you'll find out when the Kickstarter goes live. And of course you can get your own set. I'm gonna tell you in advance, the venture is the best clan because that should go just like being obvious. Um, so uh, with that being said, also, if you all have questions, we're gonna have a chance for some Q and A at the end. I know you got a ton of questions about this game and some other cool things Renegade might be uh, doing in the near future. So put your questions in chat with the word question in front of it. Normally, I say capital question. I don't know how sensitive Gen Con's uh, Twitch chat filters are, so maybe don't put it in caps. I'd hate for you to get muted, but put the word question in front of it. Write your question. We will get to it at the end. So with that being said, uh, let's get right into it. Some of the questions we already had submitted for this is the origin and the history of the Vampire the Masquerade Rivals expandable card game. I like, what is it? What is it about? Like, how, to, how did this even come to be? And I will just put that there in front of the committee to talk about. All right. Um, so I, I will say how it came to be, this was a long, a long, long process in the making. I was trying to do something with Vampire, cause, right? Because Vampire kind of went dormant in the hobby game industry for a little while. And uh, 10 years ago, I actually had approached CCP, who had acquired Vampire, about doing stuff with it in the hobby game space and got nowhere. I totally got shut down. Um, didn't happen. And then Paradox acquired it. And somebody over at Paradox was a fan of our games. And we got talking. And... Lo and behold, here we are. We, they said, what would you want to do? And I said, I would like to do a card game, sir. And they said, we would like that too. So <laughs> so that, that now we're here. And then we brought in uh, Matt Hyra. He, I'd worked with Matt. Matt's worked on lots of card games over the last 20 years. And we you know, kind of got together, put our heads together, and said, what can we do to bring a new, a new experience, um, build on you know, the, the history of the brand and what Vampire is all about, but do something new and modern um, in that space and, and something different and, you know, and then Matt ran with it. So now we're, now Roughly we're here today. From, so I can let Matt. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, I would just say one, one in thing to interject here. And I do want to hear from you, Matt, from the moment that you and paradox sort of shook on it and you were like, we're going to do a game to now when basically the game is exists and is about to at least come out on the Kickstarter, like roughly how much time has passed? Um, so it's been about a year and I'd say about a 14, 15 months since we, yeah. we were talking for about six months. We went through a bunch of, we went through a bunch of just kind of like talking about possibilities. This was even like before Matt got, got on board and then we signed the deal. And then I said, can we announce it at Gen Con? Just the deal, just that we're doing it and something's coming. We don't even have anything to show yet. So last year at Gen Con, we announced that this this thing was coming. It's going to exist. We made a short little video and teased everybody. And then people lost their minds and said, tell us more. And we said, we don't have anything more to tell you. We're just telling you it's a thing that's coming. So, and, and, 
and then we brought we brought Matt on right around that time. Uh, he joined the team that fall, and he's been working on the game for close what almost ten months, twelve months. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, about yeah, about ten months, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been yeah. Uh, there, yeah. yeah there were yeah there were already some uh, interesting building blocks that uh, that Scott and Paradox and 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 other Renegade folk had. Uh, already thought about the game, you know, they, they really didn't have a system down, but they thought, oh, this would be cool. Like having agenda for your, your clan or your deck or your, your mix of coterie, uh, having an agenda that's something that you're doing that might be different than everybody else. Uh, so you might be trying to go for a political titles or resolve conspiracies, or maybe you just want uh, to go aggro and gain agenda that way, but it's a, it's kind of an alternate victory. I say alternate victory, but it's really the main victory. Um, and uh, there's other ways to win, like just pure fighting or knocking down your opponent's resources, things like that. But good ideas right from the start were agenda, having a city deck where you actually have things that you encounter in in the world, so that there are people, you know, civilians to feed upon and things like that. Um, and just some events that happen, like in any, like in any uh, good role-playing game, because this is based on a role-playing game. We wanted to get a little bit of actual flavor of the starting city, San Francisco, into the game. So a lot of good, a lot of good. It was a good foundation, and I just built up from there. Yeah, I think my uh, my favorite thing was the the second in second Inquisition and how we use them as as this tension timer that. You know, eventually you can you can ignore them if you want, but eventually you can't ignore them, and they're going to trigger the end game um, at some point, anyways. And that was a really I thought that was a really cool feature that that excited me early on. Yep. So I, yeah, yeah I, I had the privilege of of getting met, getting to teach us how to play the game. And uh, one of the things that was most interesting to me is it, it's an expandable card game, but you were telling us something. Um, about how it's not going to be driven by like rares and how much money you spend on the deck. It is like fairly self-contained, right? That's right. Yeah, the the core set has all the cards that you need, and nothing. Every everyone who buys the core set is going to have the exact same set of cards. There are four pre-constructed decks that come in there so that you can just hit the ground running immediately. You don't have to create a deck to start playing. You can start playing with a pre-constructed deck. But there's a crypt pack inside the box that has 63 new cards, and everybody gets those 63 cards. It's not randomized or anything. So you're not going to encounter somebody at your hobby store who's got a deck full of rare cards that you've never seen before, and they're ultra powerful. So we give everyone the same tools, and we just want to see what they do with it. Sarah, if you had to explain, like, what's the game about? Like, when somebody's like, they see a deck, they see Vampire, they're like, well, like, what's the game about? So, really, it's all about you trying to use all of the resources that you have to make sure that your clan wins. And by winning, that means having enough agenda points. So, you are just sort of exerting your own control over this whole city while other vampire clans are attacking you from different directions. But what's cool about it is that my clan and my everything that I've put into building my deck is going to be specifically targeting one particular other clan at the table. So if the four of us were playing, I might be going after you, but Matt might be coming after me. And so we're having to try and balance all of the different things that we're trying to do with that, that intense goal of just going after one person. But we also have a few other ways we can win too. So if you can't just take out that one clan, then you can also get enough agenda points. And each one of us will have a different way that we do that. I love the asymmetrical part of this game. You don't all have the exact same things that you're trying to do. Different things are important to different clans, which is very thematic. So you have different ways of going about getting those agenda points. Um, so yeah, you use all the cards in your deck, different vampires, their specific cards are very powerful. Um, you use any cards you acquire from that city deck to maybe attach to your vampires, make them a little bit better, vents that come out and do different things there that you'll have to deal with along the way. But then there's also this layer of semi-cooperation where I am targeting you, Matt's targeting me, 
but I can maybe get Matt's help to take you out, which benefits mm -hmm. him because I might have some sort of a conspiracy or scheme or something that allows him to help me out a little bit by helping me, even though he wants to take me out, he gets some points that he can use to make himself more powerful. And that might help me take you out. So we're all working in these weird triangles to try and do what we need to do to win the game while not allowing the other ones to benefit too much. So those are some things I really like about it. And that's kind of the overall really big picture look at what's going on in there. So uh, can I just say that my, 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 my favorite part about the game is that if everybody knows that when I play games with Sarah, I don't play <laughs> to win the entire game. I play to only make sure Sarah loses. So <laughs> when I play this game, I, like I can play Mulcavian and I can actually help other people make sure Sarah loses. So this game is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one of the things I did. I think I enjoyed that the most. That is like the the richness of what the individual clans were after really shown through, and the fact that you know the enemy of my enemy may be my friend, or the enemy of my enemy may just be another enemy. And you did get these yeah. moments where right. even your direct rival, it might have been worth like teaming up with, at least in the short term, to stop someone else from winning, which is a very vampire thing. Uh, I yeah. really enjoyed the returning to the setting of San Francisco. I myself have a, a rich history with uh, the vampires of San Francisco, both uh, Vannevar Thomas and, uh, of course, Julian Luna, the one true prince of San Francisco. Please make sure you tell Jason Carl <laughs> I said Julian Luna was the one true prince of San Francisco. <laughs> but what elements of the world of darkness uh, did you all feel were, like, important to the game? Like, the thematic things that make the world the world that you wanted to make sure were in these cards? I think that's a good map question. Yeah, um, well, certainly um, blood is like just a huge part of the world of darkness. And as it, uh, we, we actually have in the game, your resource is prestige, which is also blood. They're actually double-sided. So it's prestige is like a, is an esoteric, you know, this is how powerful I am. But when you use it, it turns into blood and your characters, are recruited with prestige and that prestige is converted to blood. You will then spend blood for certain activities. You'll certainly lose blood in combat, but that prestige pool that you have is a diminishing resource. Just like in like the world of vampires, they need to constantly feed and they can do that on the citizens that come out of the deck. They can steal some blood from their rivals uh, or really anybody, but especially their rival. You always want to go after your rival first if you can. Um, but also I wanted to get in a lot of the kind of the, not exactly politics, but just the interaction amongst clans. Like I really thought like, what would a different clans just go do to try to undermine each other while always coming out on top? So there's a lot of interactive things like schemes and uh, conspiracies that you can uh, get going and it really just creates a little uh, social dynamic political element at the table hmm. um, were were had you all played like much vampire in the past or were you uh, new additions to to the world of darkness because it's the the game is experiencing a renaissance like the the family is growing constantly and I personally am glad that so many new types of gamers will enter the world through this medium and still get a taste for it and kind of as their segue into the greater world. Like where, did you all have like a background in this or are you uh, mostly working on the card game was kind of your main introduction? For, for, well, for me, know, back in the day. Uh, <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Apparently we all have something to say about yeah, that. You're like, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Sarah. Well, Sarah's well, first. You were again, both infinite and eternal. <laughs> Yes, please tell us. <laughs> so I will admit that I have not done a lot of role playing in my days. However, as far as vampire goes, um, I've actually owned a hobby store for almost 15 years now. And as a hobby store owner, I have sold everything vampire that you can imagine and had lots of customers and friends that really enjoyed the world. So I've experienced it through their love and enthusiasm for it. We've had 
VTOS players. I remember when Changeling came out and that was so exciting. We've had all of the different versions of Vampire that I can imagine come through our store. So I love the the family. I love seeing all these people who are just so excited to have it come back and be a real thing again. I remember just recently when the deluxe edition of the role-playing games came in and we saw it on the shelf for the first time and there were just so many people who came in and were excited to see that and really felt that deep connection back to their own roots and things that they had really enjoyed from years past and got to go experience that again. So I, I'm coming into this from a little bit of a different perspective than Scott and Matt. So Scott, tell us about your vampire experiences. So so back in the day, I definitely had played the role-playing game, um, but really most of my interaction with vampire was in the card game. So play, played the card mm-hmm. game when it came out. That was my kind of my history. It's really weird. My professional side has always been kind of like in the card game then board game space and all that but it, at the heart I'm more of a role player like that's what I personally enjoy um, that's why that's why that's why we do a role play role playing games at Renegade even though Sarah uh, told me I wasn't allowed so <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> it's true she 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 tried um, but yeah like the original the original VTOS game I I played a ton of that played you know in the 90s especially like every every TCG under the sun and then I eventually went went to work in that in that industry so but there you go <clears throat> yeah for me um growing up in Seattle um I might be dating myself a little bit here but I actually was a play tester for the original Jihad so um yeah, that, that, that'll tell you something. So yeah, I played a lot of the different World of Darkness, you know, um, Werewolf, Wraith, uh, uh, Vampire. I never ran any, I always had other people uh, doing it, but I, I played I played Vitesse, uh, Jihad really at the time. Um, bunch of the role-playing game. It wasn't until, you know, the, the role-playing game actually was the first time that I felt like an adult playing a game, you know? Whenever I would mm-hmm. play D&D as a teenager or early college, I always just pictured myself as a 12 year old for some reason. It just felt like I was 12 the whole time. But Vampire was like, okay, now it's serious, okay? But uh, recently, when I got the the job with Renegade in this this project, uh, I I busted out the, I I grabbed the new books and I ran a game that uh, for my local uh, gaming group. And so just to get myself back into the full flavor of it, because I, I really wanted to just make the game as, as close to the lore as possible. So just I just had to get all the way back in. I, and I, I will just say that even just looking at the cards, when, when our hand was dealt out to us, and spoiler alert, I played the Ventru, because of course I did. Um, <laughs> and even just like looking at the Ventru care, like when the card was placed down in front of me, I'm like, that guy's a Ventru. Like, I mean, like, I didn't need to know anything else. And then I saw some of the other ones, and it was also rich. And I will just say there was one thing in particular, and I will tell you, I was convinced by the, I was completely sold on this game in my initial mm-hmm. draw. I had an attack card called Know Your Place that is a venture attack card. And on the card, it literally is a dude just like holding his hand up, like, what are you doing? While another group of people behind him sort of sneer at you. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. Yeah, no, you you guys get it. Okay. So uh, it, it took about 30 <laughs> seconds before I was thoroughly convinced. Um, uh, well, so and I should also... Oh, should, yeah, I should also say too, like the the team at Paradox has been like intimately involved with all of that as well. Like they they've really been great. Like they they gave us a massive download of you know all the story bibles and everything that's going on um, with the lore. And you know they're they've been involved every step of the way, even through gameplay. And really, they they've helped us a lot to make sure that that flavor comes through, whether it's in mechanics and gameplay and art and all of that too. So you know we can't just say Renegade did this on their own, like. Like the the vampire, you know, World of Darkness team over at Paradox has been involved every step of the way, and they've just helped us make it that much better. Well, you know, based on what you all said, all of you mentioned like the older games, especially the old card games. I know now there's a number of board games and card games set in the Vampire World of Darkness universe. Again, we're experiencing this new renaissance, and there are all the games that went before. Uh, How is this game different from those? That's a Matt thing. Who wants? Matt. Yeah, yeah. That's a- Matt. 
That's a mad well, thing. I think, yeah, the, the, there, there have been several, there have been several uh, vampire games coming out lately. They're mostly board games and card games, uh, which are uh, delivering a specific experience. You know, it might be electing a prince or, or uh, taking over the, uh, the city, like a prince of the city type thing, or just focus like a normal board game is. With an expandable card game, we're letting the players decide how they want to play the game. So you build your deck how you want, and then you start up a game, you get a random rival at the table. That's why it's called Rivals, because you have a rival at the table, that's the person you're gunning for. You might be able to make friends a little bit with some of the other people, but and but we didn't want to make that like an automatic team up kind of thing. We wanted it every, everybody for themselves because these are vampires, they don't play nice. Um, so we've really essentially made it a customizable experience which I think is a different than what the current, uh, what the other games have been have been offering right now. Uh, and and would would you say that also like relating to games from the past and things of that? Like, do you feel um, obviously I know game design is advanced and progress over time. Um, do you feel like the the mechanics of this might be like more um, immersive than some past gameplay experiences? Well, we certainly wanted to use some of uh, the more modern methodology and just make cards a little a little easier to uh, figure out what they do just by reading it. There, there have the mm -hmm. card games have been famous from from the beginning <laughs> of just having text on them that you have to immediately every time you read a card you have to go look it up in the rule book. We try to avoid that. We have plain English on the card. We're not using a ton of keywords. There's only like two or three keywords. The disciplines, if people know vampire, they know disciplines. The discipline, you don't have to know what the symbols are. You just have to look for the symbols. So the symbols themselves don't do anything. They'll just inform what that character is good at and even what their inherent ability might be. So if somebody's good at potent, has potence or celerity, they're gonna be fast and deadly in combat. You don't have to know that that's the celerity and the potence discipline to play the game. So it's just easy, get you in quick and hook you as and hook you to the game. That's that's really the goal. <laughs> uh, I, I good luck, uh, good news. I think you achieved it. Uh, also, I was for those of you who tuned in, uh, we are going to be doing uh, questions here in a little bit. Uh, we've got Mr. Scott Data, uh, Gata, President and Publisher, Mr. Matt Hyra, Senior Game Designer, and Miss Sarah Erickson, the Director of Sales and Marketing. So put your questions in chat. Just type the word question in front of it, so we'll be able to, to draw on those uh, here momentarily. Um, also, uh, what are you all most excited for fans to experience about this game and why? Like, what do you think will surprise them about the game? Even some, maybe some of the things like around the game? Uh, I can I'll tell you that I'm here. You should you should jump in because I'm really excited about well, No, 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 Sarah should go and tell us about all the community stuff, because that's what I was going to say. So <laughs> Yeah, we understand that Vampire is and always has been something that you get together and do. Nobody sits in their house by themselves and plays a role-playing game or plays a card game or anything else. And we've had a ton of help from retail partners in the past as a community getting us together, just not only for Vampire, but for tons of things. Um, you think about any other TCG that you've played, we've gone to a store and done that. But we have these amazing tools that we've never had before, like the internet. <laughs> it really helped us allow everybody to get together. So we're taking advantage of everything we can think of to make organized play and community around Vampire. So um, I'll take a step back and talk about sort of three different parts of that. So to begin with, we're going to have the Kickstarter, which is really a great way to get everybody in one place chatting with each other excited about the game and we get to give you all sorts of fun presents and prizes and exciting things as we go along so we'll have stretch goals uh you'll see the page right launch day with tons of neat stuff in there but we'll be adding to that as we go you're welcome to jump in and ask questions post comments 
and just find other vampire fans. But we want it to last past the Kickstarter. So we've put a lot of work and effort into building a website that will launch very soon as well um, in its full grandeur. So right now it's just vampirerivals.com. You can go there and click on the get notified link for the Kickstarter. But in the future, we're going to have fully built out forums. You'll be able to create a profile, tell everyone what your favorite clan is, post your online picture and everything else. <laughs> it might be been true, maybe. Um, but then you can also do things within the vampire community. They'll get you achievements that you can have posted as part of your profile. And then all of those forums, you can ask questions, you can find friends, you can look for events in your local area, you can become a host, and that will allow you to then start hosting your own events. And that leads us to organized play. So organized play, we want people to be able to either host their own events with their own friends in their own space, whether that's currently inside your own home, whether in the future that might be a more public space, whatever you are comfortable with. And exactly, you can find people you're comfortable playing with and host your own events and be part of our organized play program. Get those achievements, they'll be part of that. Get any of the organized play materials, any special cards, any other items that we make that are cool and fun. All of those will be available to everyone, whether you have a retail store that's providing all this and making it fun and awesome, or if you're doing it on your own or one of your friends is helping you out, you'll be able to do it anywhere. And you'll be able to join us on Twitch every single week on Wednesdays, join us for Vampire Wednesdays. And on stream, we're gonna be playing Vampire. We'll talk about strategy tips. We'll talk about each of the different clans. Um, how you build your decks, how you might put these things together, how you're going to go after your rival and, and make the most of this game. And we'll be doing that every week on Wednesdays. And we'll just be adding on to that and building as we go. We actually have a studio down in San Diego we're not quite using right now, but we will be <laughs> as soon as we're able to safely. And in between, we'll all just be playing at home. So even if you don't have anyone to play with in your current space, you can come and be part of our community on Twitch every single week and still have people to talk to and interact with. So we have really big plans for organized play and for the near future. And then as we get further out, um, it's also good to know that we at this company, literally almost all of us, all of us on the executive team are here because of TCGs. And we have all been part of very big organized play programs in the past, whether that's um, Scott at Decipher with the Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, Star Wars, TCGs, um, then Upper Deck. Scott worked there as well, did uh, all of the TCGs I can imagine, Pokemon versus Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> if you, if no, there's no. a card game, which one? What's that? No, 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 no Pokemon. That was Wizards of the Coast. That's like the only one I'm I sorry, didn't, I've sorry. never worked on. World of Warcraft. Not Pokemon. World of Warcraft. Marvel, I was there for Pokemon. I was like, Matt, yeah, Matt oh, that's was right. there for Pokemon. Matt, Matt oh, yeah, for Pokemon. Yeah. Yep, yep, so between I was there. you all, you've literally caught them all between yes. you. Yes. We've yep. done all <laughs> of them. Right. Yeah, I I was a Wizards of Coast judge. Um, so yeah, anyway, we've done was, lots and lots of tournaments. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah, the head Matt judge of the done. Wizards of the Coast Tournament Center. So yeah. That's right. <laughs> there you go. So we all are literally sitting in these seats because of TCGs and we all love organized play. So, and we love big tournaments because that's really fun to just get a ton of people in one place. I remember the very first time I went to a magic tournament and it was in Salt Lake City and there were probably 600 people there. I'd played magic for like six months. I didn't know anybody else even knew about this game. And I walked into this building of 600 other people who all loved the same thing that I loved. And it was such a good feeling. And I want all of us to be able to experience that. So we have big plans for big tournament events in the future, but we're gonna hold off on talking about this too much until it's safe because yeah. we all really care about making sure everybody's safe. Yeah. But I, I, this is something that you can you can plan in the future to be part of. Right. Yeah, I will say yeah. we 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 can't say the details on it, but I, so my tease would be for big for very big events, we have some very thematic and immersive prizes 
planned. Take that as you will. <laughs> I think, right? Are those, Scott, the, are those the right words? Yeah. I, I, I didn't, so. I didn't spoil anything. I'm just, I'm, I like to tease. I, apparently I there's going to be a blood drive at 3 a.m. That's all I can think of, you know, so. It's true. <laughs> a yeah. blood drive at 3 a.m. <laughs> so yeah, if you're if you're excited about this as a card game, there will be a lot that we're excited about doing for that. But remember, it is an expandable card game. So you will have access to every single card, even if it's something that came out in an organized play kit. We're going to go way out of our way to make sure that you are able to get that in the future, even if you miss out it on that right at the very beginning. There are cards that we're giving away um, that during our Kickstarter, for example, that are maybe aesthetic upgrades so those might be harder to find later but there won't be any gameplay exclusive cards that are very difficult to find we don't want that to be an issue for anyone so that's that's all the exciting community and tournament stuff that i wanted to talk about i just i would like to i mean i realize that you guys say you want everybody to have every card but if you decide to have like an ultra exclusive like baron of the valley card that is like a single use <laughs> i'm just saying Maybe we can work that out. I know some people. I am a people, you we know? Can, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can, mm -hmm. we can talk. We can talk. <laughs> uh, 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 Scott, uh, Matt, well, what about you? Like, what do you think is going to be like surprising about the game itself? You know, the things around the games, like, what are you most looking forward to? Um, I mean, for me, it, it really is all the community stuff. Like, like Sarah said, I, I come from a, a CCG TCG background. And one of the things that I didn't like about that environment was that you 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 basically had this big separation, right? You kind of had the haves and have nots sometimes, right? You had high-end organized play that could be very satisfying, and then you might have kitchen table players. But those communities sometimes were very, very split. And what I like about what I like about what we're doing and what we have planned is that we're really trying to build one very strong community. And don't get me wrong, it's going to be competitive. You can you can play this game, be very competitive. You can customize your decks and come up with new things. Just because the card pool doesn't have this rare, you know, kind of, you know, beat your wallet up chase to it, doesn't mean that there's there's not that creativity on the deck building side. Um, but we really do want one really large, very healthy, welcoming com community. I'm really excited about that. Like I I really enjoy that. Like game communities are fun. That's that's why we play games is to be with other people that we really like being with. So getting to build one of those and create one of those is is really exciting. It's part of part of why Renegade even exists in the first place, to be honest. So so it's neat. To be with people we like, but then crush them utterly though. Like that's why we play. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, both, for sure. Both of those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I that's, that's the main yeah. reason why Scott and I work together, really. <laughs> Yeah, I like Sarah a lot. I just don't want her to something, ever win. Something about keep your enemies close, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the, the vampire yeah. ethos is really like moving through here. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, Matt, you, you, were, you were saying. Yeah, personally, um, so the, the four pre-constructed decks that, that come in the box are all mono clans. So if you play Bruja, all your characters are Bruja. If you play Ventru, all your characters are Ventru. But you have 100% freedom to pick whatever vampires you want for your coterie. And I'm looking forward to seeing the combos that people come up with. And also, the I, I, I like the interactive cards. So I really want to see that, you know, how people how people use those. So, and you can tell me if you don't want to get too deep into the mechanics right now, but but how is that going to work with the mixed coterie type things? Because right now, I know the, the individual decks, you had your goal state that was uh, very distinct. Like, um, you know, I, I will say, you know, for Ventru, like gaining a certain amount of influence is what the Ventru were after. So say if I had right. mixed that or I had all of these different things, would I still be in pursuit of that goal? Or were there some other like mixed clan goals that are possible? There certainly are mixed clan goals, and the way that it works is you get to choose your starting haven and your starting agenda, and or I should say you're not starting. You get to choose your haven, your agenda, and your starting character who is your leader. So those three choices are made before you even sit down at the table, 
and that is going to guide your strategy a long way. But after that, you can put whatever vampires, whatever cards you want in your deck to aid those particular goals. Now, if you play a Ventru deck, you're going to be looking for some of the Camarilla titles, you know, like a Keeper of Elysium or a Herald. But going straight just for titles and nothing else might leave you a little lacking in other areas. So we've got it where you can, you know, you can put whatever vampires you need into your deck to make sure that whatever part of your deck isn't all about titles is uh, helping helping out where your deck's where your deck was weak. Sorry about the phone here. I'm at my parents' place. So. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, that is what I did. Been through calling I did. tell you that like going after titles yeah, is fine. That was, like, I don't, like, that was it's probably like, really a valid way to live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so again, you all, you it just put uh, any questions that you might have in chat. We're about to we're about to go into the questions now. So again, just write the word question in front of it. Uh, we're going to get to Q and A here momentarily. I would just say, even though we will kind of have a chance at the end for you all to kind of give your sign off, uh, but before we kind of get into the questions, I will just say, uh, what is the number one thing each of you? wants people to know about this vampire rivals card game like if they if they leave this with a single tweet in their mind what's the one thing you want them to take about this and i, I will start with you sarah because as the master of sales and marketing this should be very easy <laughs> <laughs> we so my one takeaway for anyone listening to this is that we want you to be part of our family come join us enjoy everything that we have and we want to hear from you we want you to be part of this come interact with us and you can do that like i said on the kickstarter you'll be able to do that on our forums at vampirerifles.com and we also have a discord just for this game that we'll be telling you all about soon so come and enjoy it and tell us what you like tell us what you don't like and just interact with us that's all we're looking for all right Scott. i'll go so, so, so coming, coming from a background of working on lots of licensed games and basically having to take other people's worlds, right. And we get to play in their sandbox. Um, it's really important to me that you do that the right way. You know, um, some games like licensed games will have bad reputation, right? Like you, you just kind of take a world and kind of put it on something generic. And, um, I, I can't tell you how against that I am. Like it's, it's just goes totally contrary to what I think is is the whole reason to do it in the first place. And I really am proud that we dove into the lore, got back up to speed on, on the new world of darkness and what was what was going on there, because really what we want to provide is an authentic experience. And I am really excited for people to jump in there and see what we did and let us know what they think. Like that's that's part of what this game is. Also, because it's expandable, it's going to evolve over time. And like we've done with some of our other expandable type games um this is just the beginning and once the community gets bigger they're going to be part of how this game grows and how it evolves in the future and that's really exciting because it does truly become a community experience on more than just the play level but um how how the game evolves and, and what it looks like a year from now might be very different than what it looks like today like we even i'm all right sarah i'm gonna not exactly spoil stuff i'm gonna tease spoil stuff we even have stuff planned in the future where you may get to influence what you see, what you see coming up in the game. So again, that's my, you know, like I'm kind of teasing, spoiling something, but I can't tell you everything because if not, Sarah will yell at me when we get off. So there you go. <laughs> right. <clears throat> uh, my number one thing that I hope uh, people take away from this or that I want to get out there is that this game is competitive. It's immersive, but it's fun. So even when you're not doing so well in the game, you're, you're falling behind an agenda or your prestige and blood is low, you have ways of manipulating things in game to get you back into it. And you're just gonna have fun trying to knock down the leaders in, 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 in order to get back up there yourself. So sometimes it's fun to uh, come from behind because no one sees you coming and they, they're not messing with you. So yeah, just, it's fun. That is, that is all true. Uh, no, it is fantastic. And again, I just will say again, I, I got to play it and I'm looking forward to playing it a lot more. 
I know what I was going to ask. Um, there are demos this weekend, right? Are they all full? Is there still a chance to sign up for a demo or catch one? So we are doing demos on our Discord channel through Tabletopia. And if you want to jump in on those, go to our Discord channel. And the easiest way to find that for sure is just go to renegadegames.com. There's a huge banner that says Gen Con Online. And then if you go there, there's a link to our Discord channel. So go find us on Discord. And basically the way it works is we did have pre-sign up events that were scheduled. So if you knew ahead of time you really wanted to play some Vampire the Masquerade Rivals expandable card game, then you could sign up for a particular time. Those slots are very full, but we still have open tables in our Discord. So if you go in there, um, find the Vampire Rivals channel and then let them know you're looking for a seat at a table, then if there's a seat open, they'll slot you in there as soon as possible. There's a wait list and then we basically just message you as soon as it's open. And if you want to look through the rule book, check it out by yourself a little bit, um, you can go in there and ask them in that Discord channel as well what the options are. Because it's we do want to make sure you have the best experience, so we really like it when our demo staff can walk you through that and make sure that you understand understand all the different terms that we're using and how the game works, but you can still go and watch people play, poke around a little bit and see what it looks like. It's, uh, I, I would say, let's, before I interrupted myself with another thought, uh, it, it really felt like I was playing vampire. I was at that from, from the moment I laid down the Ventru till I drew my cards to one of our adversaries got turned over and it was the second Inquisition and the way they actually mechanically affected the game. And then I very quickly realized I could protect myself from the second Inquisition, but sick them on everyone else because there's no negative <laughs> repercussions from that ever. It's fine. Uh -huh. um, it was all those, it, it really felt like Vampire. So yes, definitely check it out. Uh, sign up now uh, at Vampire Rivals um, if to get notified to support the Kickstarter on August 4th, please do. Now, that being said, let's take some questions. Um, first question, this is from Mr. E. Lackey. Could be maybe Mr. E. Lackey. I don't even know. I apologize if I've insulted you, E. Lackey. Uh, what was the process like in creating the art? Is there an art director at Renegade or are all the pieces commissioned? Uh, yes. So there is an art director at Renegade. Um, <laughs> uh, that's uh, Anita Osborne. Um, she was overseeing all the art and we worked with various artists, um, a couple different studios, and then of course, Paradox. Um, the way the process generally works is Matt takes the, the, his, his card list, his checklist, and then creates an art list of what he wants and what he needs based on theme and, and immersion and how it's going to represent gameplay. And then from that, that point, it goes to Anita and she works with outside artists. They write art, or write art descriptions. Um, uh, those art descriptions go to Paradox. Paradox gives feedback on the art descriptions and that might iterate for a couple, a couple rounds. And then eventually they go to sketches and the artists will do sketches. And then those sketches go through us and through Paradox. And we might iterate on those sketches for a couple rounds. And eventually we'll wind up with absolutely fantastic art by some amazing artists. So there you go. I would also like to say on that note, art is super important to us, but also from my understanding of the fans of Vampire the Masquerade in general, art's always been really important. And just like you mentioned, as soon as you saw that card, you knew it was a venture and you had an intrinsic idea of what that meant. So we are going to be featuring artists and who they are and how they worked in a bunch of our updates during the Kickstarter. And just right there on launch day, you'll be able to see all of the different arts, artists, art studios, everyone who worked on the game. So if you're interested in that part of it, definitely come and check out the updates on our Kickstarter page as we go through and really do a deep dive into those artists. Fantastic. Uh, what's the game time for a full four player game? Oh, that's from Full King of Odonata, yeah. by the way, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was given the person's name, King <laughs> of Odonata. Okay. Ooh, well, um, yeah, four-player game. Um, of course, the, the online version currently takes a little bit longer because you only have one little, one little uh, pointer to do everything instead of scoop, you know? Um, but <laughs> essentially, a live game, once everyone knows how to play, four players, a little over an hour. Not much. It's essentially 15 minutes per player, but four-player games tend to have a lot more table talk and scheming 
and drawing other people into your conspiracies. Um, I'm using these words because these are actual card types in the game, by the way. So uh, look forward to those. But yeah, when when there's a lot of when there's more players, there's going to be more table talk, interaction, passing cards around. Do you want to do you want to join my conspiracy? Do you want to help me with my scheme? That kind of thing. So that you don't have as much of that in a two player version, for instance. Um, so a, a, a four player game could last a little bit longer than 15 minutes per player, but not too much. Hmm. Um, uh, again, from uh, E. Lackey, will buying multiple core sets give players more building customization? I'll handle that one too, right. So buying the core set will give you uh, three copies of every card, which is the card maximum in your deck, okay? So your library has, you know, you, you're buying an additional core set will not give you anything uh, that that other people don't have. And it won't, it won't improve your deck building uh, capabilities unless you have a play group where everybody wants ultimate customization, right? So the set, the core set also contains one of each vampire. And there are hardcore groups who want ultimate customization, might want to, could pick up an additional set so that people can have additional vampires to go to go through because otherwise it's certainly possible to just buy one core set and four people can play and modify their decks with the boot with the uh, crypt pack the 60 extra 63 cards but some people might be like oh i want that vampire oh i want him too in that case they can either work it out or draft vampires or yeah they could could if they're ultra competitive they might want a second set but it is not necessary uh, for a, a more casual play group to and with with a good amount of customization. So and even clan mixing because there's there's extra vampires even in the crypt pack. So yeah, there are options, but it depends on how hardcore you want to be. I will note on something. that. Yeah, just along that same note, um, uh, talking to and showing our Kickstarter page to several expandable card game lovers, several of them have said, I now know how this game works. I understand how the customization works. I would still like to be able to add an extra set if I could, just so that when you build a deck, you can have three copies of your favorite card in this deck and three copies of your favorite card in this other deck and have them sleeve the way that you want and not have to tear your decks apart to play a different deck. Mm -hmm. So okay. we are offering a second whole set of the game as an add-on. So if you are one of those players who really likes building decks and want to do it that way, you can just choose that as an add-on. And I will say that we will make sure that you get every card because there will be some things you might see in the stretch goals that make you say, well, if I get a second set, does that mean I'm not going to have all of the cards for my second set? We will make sure for each set that you get, you get all of the cards that you'll need to make sure it's complete. So there you go. They also, they replied with, they were very satisfied with that answer. Uh, although I do get it in broad strokes. I mean, it's simulative of San Francisco and there's that one person, you know, and if they're over there, they're not over there. So I get as a game, right. Sure, you might want to be able to deploy six of them, but I also get the logic of you're like, well, you know, if that's who they're working for tonight, then you're kind of screwed. Um, uh, <laughs> this one's from Sarity. Uh, if this game is a target your rival game, what happens when you play it two player? Hmm, that's a Matt question. In in two player, you you have but one rival, so uh, you're gunning for the person across the table and they're gunning for you. So it's a little bit more difficult to find people, to find uh, someone sympathetic to your scheming or to engage you in, with your conspiracies. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, but, oh, you scheme with me against me? <laughs> right, it, it, there, there are some schemes that are actually beneficial to all players. So even in, in a two player game, if someone is agreeable that we should all gain some prestige, they might vote for it, and that's totally fine. So the cards don't work any differently in a two-player game. It's just who's going to be with you versus who's going to be against you. It's more likely they're going to be against you. But if a scheme has um, if a scheme has a mutually beneficial result, which some of them do, uh, then they might be for it. So it mechanically doesn't work any differently. It's just the interaction will work a little bit differently. 
Uh, this one is from Tabletop Bellhop, and in, in, in Whoa. I think this one might be one of the ones you want to be a little coy about, but I'm still going to ask. How many expansions are planned out so far over how many years? Oh, years? I don't know. Will we even be here in a couple years? Like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's a Scott question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the yeah. So, all of so them. <laughs> that's right. All of them. We have all the expansions planned for all of the years. Um, <laughs> done. Done. So, no, really, um, we have we have a long term plan. Our 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 plan is to have new content out every so many months. We want to keep the game fresh. We want to. We have. We know where we want to go in the future. We've got a roadmap. That roadmap might change based on you know community feedback and involvement, but but we've got a plan. This isn't a one off. Um, we we put a lot into it. Like we want to be making this game for years and years to come. Um, and I and I think the community can support it. And certainly, the, certainly the gameplay can support it. And uh, thematically, there's a lot of space to explore. We're starting in San Francisco. Yeah, I'll say that interesting turn of phrase there sir um i i, I also uh there are other like friendly advice. I, I was like maybe uh steer clear of both southern california and seattle in chicago those places are all train wrecks don't go to in, in no london don't go to london um but this one is from uh, uh krosky will all clans be available or only the four clans in order so in to, the to course, start, set, just the yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. got it. You uh, do it, Matt. The, the, the core set, yeah, we, we, we can't, we didn't want to put 10 decks in the, uh, in the core set. Um, and so the, the core set has the Bruja, the Ventru, the Toreador, and the Malkavians. Uh, so in the future, we will feature other clans. So, yeah. And I can also say that, you know, having a nice, four clan starting start with four pre-constructed decks and a big booster pack allowed us to keep the price down. We're on Kickstarter, but this is not a $150 game like people are used to on Kickstarter now. It's way less. I don't know if we're saying. I think we're saying, aren't we? I don't know. Under 50. We haven't that. spoiled that yet. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, well Do you want can we spoil to? this? Anybody care? You know, I, I would just like no. I would just like to say people are tuning in now. This is now a Gen Con exclusive announcement, you know, in keeping with it's the true. spirit it's true. of the enterprise here. Yes. So you will get a bit of a break if you do join us on Kickstarter and you have your foot in the door right at the very beginning. Um, so the base game with some stretch goals is going to just be forty dollars. If you just want to check this out, forty bucks, you get all of the gameplay stuff. Um, if you want to be a little fancier and have some nice upgrades, then we do have an all-in pledge that is $100, and it will have all of the stretch goals, and there will be some very shiny things included. And you'll see all of that on our Kickstarter August 4th, coming up next Tuesday. Yeah, I would say, what have we been saying about the all-in $100 pledge? It's almost too much value. I think that's almost the too much value. It's, almost too much value. It's a little silly when it's all said and it, done and we get to the end and if we unlock everything, it's yeah, it's um we're showering you with love. <laughs> so basically I told are... Scott that my job I, I I told Scott I was like, Man, my job is too hard. Can you please make my job a little easier? And he's like, Sure, we will make this thing so good that no one will be able to pass this up. We'll put <laughs> all of these things in it that we could possibly imagine. And it's only a hundred bucks. Like seriously, this is a really good deal. And we wanted to do that because A, we're all card game fans and we got a little excited about all these exciting little extra things that are shiny and fun. We kind of like accessories a lot. And so we, we put some of those in there. And also we just wanted you guys to really love it when you get it and have all of the options that you could think of and be really excited to put this on your table. So we think you'll be pretty happy with it. I realize you guys are used, you people of the internet, 
dear friends, are used to people being like, oh, wow, now how much would you pay? That's incredible. Y'all, I don't work for Renegade. I've played the game. These cards are incredible. And if it's really like $40 and a hundred, <laughs> you should buy it like quickly and buy like a lot of it because I really thought you were going to be like 150, <laughs> like 200 bucks. Like I was just prepared because that's the world we live in. That's kind of insane. Also, I love you for it on behalf of the rest of us. Thank you so much. Um, two more questions and then we're going to wrap this up. Uh, is there any potential for expanding out into some of the other World of Darkness settings, like Werewolf, Mage, etc.? Uh, I will say that this is a Vampire the Masquerade card game today, but you never know what happens with us and Paradox in the future. Um, there are always possibilities. Excellent. That was a, that was very tactical, very diplomatic. I appreciate it. Also, also, it was not a no. Never seen uh, it. La last question. <laughs> what is your favorite clan uh, for each of you? In no pressure, if you don't have a favorite clan, that is fine because we know it's been true. But if you have a favorite clan, uh, what would it be? This is from this is from Sapphire Parlor. It said, "I bet uh, I bet two agenda on Malkavian for Matt is Matt's favorite." clan so what 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 is it favorite oh, clan wow. for all three of you oh yeah well that that was a that's a good bet but you might only get 50 percent on that because malkavian is probably my favorite in the game but in the world of darkness i actually like the toreador just because they're you know the seekers of beauty and artists so i just i just like that so hmm. nothing wrong with the roses okay mm -hmm. all right uh, I would Scott, so in the game, yeah. So I would say in the game right now, I'm I'm enjoying Malkavian, um, mainly because I really like scheming. Um, but I in the IP, um, like sorry, Ventru, like there you go. Um, there's just there's just friend. something there's just something about it that you know is very appealing. <laughs> I would just like to say, people of the internet, this man's the CEO, and he's like, Ventru, and I'm like, like, like we live it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, last, but certainly not least, again, Sarah, I know you you are in the process of immersing yourself into the family and the lore, but at least right now, uh, are any of them jumping out at you is, is speaking to you? Oh, yeah. I am actually going to be playing Malkavian, my favorite clan, tomorrow at 3 o'clock uh, Pacific time. And that would be noon Eastern time on our Renegade Twitch channel. So come join me. I'll be playing Malkavian and we'll do a full live playthrough so you can see how the game works, get a look at all that beautiful artwork, and check it out while I play my favorite clan, Malkavian. You know, there's nothing wrong with the Moon Children. There are no bad clans. There is just one demonstrably superior clan. That's all. That's all. That's the only thing I'm saying. Um, uh, that being said, we're about to wind this up because we don't want Gen Con to like play us off the stage. Like this is the Oscars, and I am going to say one little thing here, and then we're going to go in reverse order to let you guys finish us up. But I would just say, please visit VampireRivals.com to get notified when the Kickstarter goes live, August fourth. Um, I don't know because I haven't seen it, but I deeply suspect based on what I've heard, there might be some early bird goals there. So be prepared to jump in quickly. Uh, the game is incredible. And if you can get it for $100, uh, at the risk of sounding cliche, it'd be a bargain at twice the price. Um, and sign up for the newsletter. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us here, of course. And uh, I, you know, uh, I will hand it to you, Sarah to decide who is going to give us the sign off or if you yourself are going to do it, ma'am. I will sign us off. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, this has been Reggae Game Studios with B. Dave Walters as our fantastic host this afternoon. And we've been chatting about Vampire the Masquerade Rivals expandable card game coming to Kickstarter on August 4th. Thank you guys so much. It has been a blast. Thank you for all the wonderful questions. And hopefully we will see you on our social media, on our forums, our Kickstarter very soon. We look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy con, everybody. <laughs>